सो वेलकम स्टूडेंट टूडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द परवरेशन प्रोसेस तो परवरेशन इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू प्रोसेसेस परमेशन एंड इवेपरेशन सो इन दिस प्रोसेस वी कंबाइन द मेम्ब्रेन बेस्ड परमेशन प्रोसेस विद द इवेपरेशन सो दिस इज द स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन बेस्ड प्रोसेस वेयर द फेस चेंज अकर्स ड्यूरिंग द सेपरेशन सो हियर this is the feed side here liquid enters in the feed channel from this point and uh, flows from this direction and permeable the different feed species or different components present in the feed permeates through the membrane from here from here to across the membrane from here to here so this is the permeate side so once the uh, uh, once the uh, different components approaches to the permeate site they vaporize and they comes out from the uh, permeate site in the vapor form so it is a com combination of two processes permeation and vaporization so basically in the uh, uh, pervaporation processes uh, in the pervaporation process the separation occurs in three different stages first the different species present in the feed um, absorbed at the surface of the membrane is absorbed as the surface of the membrane then they will uh, these absorbed species diffuses across the membrane due to the concentration difference then they will dissolve at the other side of the membrane in the vapor form so for vaporization we generally use two different processes in first process we use the vacuum pump to create the high vacuum in the permeate site due to the high vacuum the desorption occurs in the vapor phase or we can use the a carrier gas like n2 or like nitrogen or helium in the permeate side so due to the these gases the partial pressure of the desorbed component will reduce and they will reduce, they will dissolve in the vapor phase so the first question arises that what is the benefit of the vaporization in the membrane based separation process so for understanding for to understand this thing we have to compare the pervaporation process with the reverse osmosis in reverse osmosis we separate the water uh, we separate the salt from the water so the reverse osmosis membranes are selective for the water not for salt and in the salt water mixtures the water present at the higher concentration so when you separate the salt and water and salt from the uh, by using the uh, reverse osmosis process the concentration of water is generally 99.9% and the concentration of salt is very minute that is less than 0.1% at that time we use the reverse osmosis process and the membranes are uh, uh, selective for the water so when you have the higher concentration of the selective component in the feed side so they can easily absorb easily diffused and easily most importantly easily dissolved from the permeate side now suppose you want you have prepared a, you have a type of mixture where the membrane is selective for the solute not the solvent suppose you have the water alcohol mixture and you have a membrane which is the hydrophobic membrane and that membrane is selective for alcohol not water and concentration of alcohol in water is supposed is less than 1% now that a if that minute amount of alcohol is absorbed on the surface of membrane and that diffuses at the other side of the membrane then it is very difficult to dissolve that minute amount of alcohol from the at the permeate side it will not dissolve easily why because concentration is so low of al of alcohol in the mixture that it will saturate the membrane but it will not dissolve from the permeate side so for removal of the uh, that uh, for desorption of that uh, that alcohol from the uh, from the, from the membrane we have to use a driving force and that can be provided by the vacuum or by the carrier gas so that driving force is the phase change so when the phase change occurs then the uh, uh, from the liquid to the vapor then the molecules of the dissolved uh, component can easily moves from the permeate side or it will rapidly removes from the surface of the membrane
so basically pervaporation process is used to separate the uh, liquid liquid mixture uh, where the one component is present in the minute amount and that component is selectively separated by the by the membrane so in this diagram it is also shown the which type of which type of mixture can be separated from the pervaporation process here you have the water dioxane mixture so if you see the if you check the vapor liquid equilibrium of water dioxane mixture it makes the azeotropic uh, mixture so what is the azeotropic mixture azeotropic mixture are the mixtures where the boiling point of both component are nearly equal so they cannot be easily separated out by using the the traditional distillation process so this is the mole fraction of water in the vapor and this is the mole fraction of water in the liquid in the vapor liquid equilibrium so you can see that at the lower concentration of water if the water is present in the, at very low concentration in the liquid then the um, in vapor phase you have the higher concentration of water water can be vaporized at higher concentration but when you increase the concentration of water in the liquid then you will see the opposite result then the dioxin concentration will increase in the in the vapor phase in comparison to the liquid phase so this is the type of this is the type of water liquid uh, this is the type of where uh, azeotropic mixture so this type of mixture is very difficult to separate by the traditional distillation process in the traditional distillation process you need a third additive which can separate out this two component so in pervaporation we can use a membrane which is the either hydrophobic or hydrophilic so the membrane may have the higher affinity to, towards the water or membrane may have the higher affinity towards the organic compounds so if membrane have the higher affinity towards the water then it will the water will selectively diffuse across the membrane then it can be easily vaporized so you can easily shift the equilibrium by in the pervaporation process so in the distillation process you have the this equilibrium graph and in pervaporation process you have the this equilibrium graph now the advantage of the membrane uh, advantages of the pervaporation process over the other processes so first is the no additives uh, is required so in if you are generally as i told you that the pervaporation process is used to separate the azeotropic mixture so if you are using any traditional separation process then you need the azeotropic additive to separate out that liquid but here we are using the selective membrane so you are not any additives is not required second is the no low energy requirement low why because it here the a component is uh, selectively permeating through the membrane so that only component have has to be vaporized if you are using the distillation then the both component will be vaporized so here the requirement of energy is relatively low in compar comparison to the traditional uh, distillation process third is the no reactive process non reactive process if we use any reactive process to separate out any compound from the uh, from the mixture then that compound will be destroyed due to the reaction but it is a physical process so you have a you have the two different streams where one one stream contains the if you check the diagram then, then you can see that if, if you check this diagram so the one species will selectively diffuse out from the membrane so you have the uh, uh, higher concentration of one species in the permeate side and you have the higher concentration of the other species in the rejected side or the uh, uh, rejection side so here you have the two different is output stream one contains a single component and second component second is uh, stream contains the second component now fourth uh, advantage is it this process can be used in continuous manner so if you compare this process with the processes like absorption or adsorption so the the additive used in absorption or adsorption will be saturated out after some time and required the regeneration but this is a continuous membrane based processes are continuous process so you need not to regenerate the membrane and this process can be used without any delay or without any 
uh, stoppage in the process. Now fifth advantage is lower cap capital cost as compared to distillation. So we know that the distillation setups are huge setups and that require a lot of capital cost but generally membrane based pressure setups are very small in size and that required a very relatively small uh, low capital cost. Now the different type of membranes used in this process. So generally we use the, the, the membrane used in the perforation process can be, uh, can be classified in three different types. First is the hydrophilic membranes, second is the hydrophobic membranes and fourth is the membranes which are used to organic organic separations. So generally hydrophilic membranes means the membranes which has the the membranes which have the higher affinity towards the water for like the po polyvinyl alcohol membranes, PVA membranes. So these type of membranes can, can be used to separate the water from the water organic compound mixtures like water alcohol mixtures. So you can separate uh, the water can be selectively uh, permeates through the membrane and then vaporize at other side and you can separate out the water minute amount of water present in the liquid from the water alcohol mixture. Second type of membranes are the hydrophobic membranes which has these type of membrane membranes have the higher affinity towards the organic compounds. So you can use this type of membrane to separate out the organic compounds from the water. So the uh, suppose you have the water which contains the small amount of organic impurities like alcohols or like aldehydes or ketones or tol phenols. So you can remove that phenols or ketones from the water by using the silicon type membranes. So these organic compounds will be uh, permeates out selectively through the membrane then they can, will be vaporized in the permeate side. Third type of membranes are the organic which, uh, membranes which are used to organic organic separation. So like modified cellulose ester membranes. So these type of membranes are used to ar ar aromatic para paraffinic separations like uh, tolvin and heptane separation or ol uh, olefinic paraffinic separation like uh, uh, and heptane and heptene separation and paraffinic branch paraffinic paraffin separation like isoctane and octane separation or high molecular weight paraffin to uh, low molecular weight, uh, ultra high molecular weight or low molecular weight paraffin separation like hexane and, and octane separation. So these are also the application of major application of the uh, membrane. So basically the potential application of um, uh, operation process can also be uh, defined by this classification. So these are the some uh, commercial application of uh, uh, per operation process. First is the uh, separate uh, for separation of the mixture which are difficult to separate by uh, conventional techniques such as the azeotropic mixture. Second is removal of volatile organic compound from the water. So if you have the waste water which contains the phenol and other these type of compounds you can use the per operation process to remove that compounds. Third is for maintaining the concentration of alcohol, alcohol in the alcoholic beverage like beer or wine. So you can maintain the concentration of alcohol by removing the excess amount of alcohol from this beverage. Fourth is the removal of fragments from the flower juice. So if you want to uh, produce the uh, perfume uh, in the perfume, perfume industry, you can use the operation process to remove the organic compounds present in the flower juice, which is responsible for the fragments. Uh, fifth is the dehydration of biofuels. If you make the bioethanol or biodiesel as a fuel, then it contains the uh, small amount of water. That small amount of water can be removed by using the operation process. Sixth is the removal of sulfur containing compounds from the gasoline, especially the aromatic compounds. So like thiophenes or benzothiophenes, these are the aromatic compounds, uh, aromatic sulfur containing compounds and these compounds are very difficult to remove by the traditional sulfur removal processes. So we can use the uh, pervaporation process to remove the, these compounds from the transportation fuel, especially the gasoline important aspect of this process is that this process is generally used to separate the minute amount of solute liquid solute present in the mixture 
this process cannot be used to separate out the large amount of the a component which present in the large amount in the mixture why because here you have to hear the vaporization occurs at the permeate sign suppose you want to separate a compound which present in the uh, 0.5 mole fraction or the weight fraction in the mixture so what's happened that amount has to be vaporized in the permeate side so for a uh, vaporization you need the latent heat of vaporization or you need the energy to vaporize the component and that energy will comes from the liquid side so what's happen when you, whenever you vaporize whenever the vaporization occurs in the vaporization process the temperature of the feed mixture will drop so if you vaporize the so the a large amount of the mixture in the permeate side or a large amount of uh, feed in the permeate side then the uh, temperature of feed stream will drop significantly and that will lead to the phase change in the solid solid state or the because diffusion is a uh, temperature dependent phenomena and absorption and desorption also a temperature dependent phenomena so the amount of the diffusivity of feed uh, species in that uh, uh, from the membrane will reduce significantly with the reducing temperature so basically this process can only be used to separate out the compounds which present only the 1% 2% at uh, up to the 5 uh, up to the 10% in the mixture this uh, process cannot be used to separate out any compound which present more than 10% in the mixture now the mass transfer within the membrane yeah uh, based on in the evaporation process so here again we define a parameter which is similar to as the uh, we define in the gas separation alpha alpha is the separation parameter separation factor or selectivity that is equal to alpha a double dash divided by alpha b double uh, uh, w a double dash divided by w b double dash divided by w a dash divided by w b dash so here w a double dash is the con con concentration of component a in uh, permeate side w b double dash is the concentration of component b in the permeate side w a double dash is the concentration of a in the feed side and wb dash is the concentration of b in the feed side suppose a is separating out selectively towards the, from the membrane so suppose concentration of a is one less than one percent then concentration of b will be greater than 99 percent and then the if the membrane is not very much selective then this term will leads to be w a double dash divided by w a dash okay so they basically this represent the how much concentration enhances in the permeate side in comparison to the feed side so if uh, the value of selectivity should be higher than one or the lower than one for the separation of the separation in the evaporation process it should not be nearly equal to one otherwise separation does not uh, does not occurs so the transport final transport of the molecules across the membrane in, can be uh, divided in the three different steps in this process first is the adsorption of permeating molecules on the feed side in liquid phase at the membrane surface second is the diffusion of these molecules through the membrane from feed side to permeate side and third is the desorption of the permeating molecules in permeate side in the vapor phase so in this process vaporization occurs inside the membrane basically when the molecules absorbed this is the liquid side this is the vapor side so when the membrane when the molecules of liquid absorbed in the membrane surface surface at that time the molecules were present in the liquid phase once they absorb in the membrane surface so they have in the solid phase uh, inside the solid solid structure trapped in the solid structure then they will diffuse from the feed side to permeate side and when they dissolve in the permeate side then they dissolve in the when they when they reached in the permeate side and dissolved from the permeate side they dissolved in the vapor phase 
so the phase change occurs during the transportation uh, transport from the across the membrane itself now <coughs> now i told as i told you that mem this process is used to separate the liquid liquid mixture and that membrane should have the higher uh, affinity towards a single component which present a very minute amount so the if the membrane doesn't have very high affinity towards that compound then that compound cannot be separated out because the composition of the concentration of that compound in the feed is very very minute you have to remove you, you want to remove basically a very minute amount of component present in the in the feed mixture from from the feed mixture so basically uh, when the when the membrane has the so much high affinity towards a single component and that component will absorb inside the membrane then that polymeric membrane will be swell in presence of that component so when the liquid molecule enters in the polymeric uh, uh, structure the polymer start to swell and when the polymer start to swell then the uh, uh, then the diffusion and absorption phenomena will change the amount of diffusivity of the that liquid co compound liquid molecule uh, compound in the membrane will change so basically this uh, concept is called the an isotropic swelling because this uh, due to this swelling the uh, concentration the diff the term diffusivity term will be, uh, will be will becomes the function of the concentration as the concentration of liquid or as the concentration of the uh, solute increases in the feed mixture the diffusivity will, will increase exponentially so it will affect the separation so that's why uh, the that's why the, in this uh, per operation diffusivities are generally the function of concentration itself now we will develop a mathematical model to uh, calculate the fluxes in the pervaporation process so as i told you that in pervaporation process uh, in the transport process pervaporation transport process can be defined as the solution diffusion model where the feed species first uh, is selectively absorbed at the surface of the membrane then diffuse across the membrane then dissolve at the permeate site in the vapor phase so suppose a uh, partial pressure of a feed species in the feed channel is uh, p dash then this feed species will absorb at the membrane surface then the concentration of that feed species become the phi dash then it will diffuse across the membrane then the concentration of that feed species at the other side of membrane will become the phi double dash then it will dissolve from the membrane surface then it in the concentration of that feed species in the permeate side will become the p not concentration the partial pressure of the feed is uh, that species at the permeate side will become the p double dash so the di diffusion phenomena can be represented by the fixed law of diffusivity so jv equal to minus d d phi by dx where phi represent the concentration x is the direction d is the diffusivity and jv is the flux so basically jv the um, uh, the uh, units of jv is mass per meter square second or moles per meter square second based on the unit of phi if phi is in the moles then it will be the moles per meter square second and phi is in mass then it will be the mass per meter square second and d is diffusivity the units of diffusivity is meter square per second and x is the distance or the thickness it depends upon the thickness of membrane now we will we will start with the simple case suppose d is constant generally in this process d is the in the per operation d is not constant but suppose we assume that d is constant now phi can be correlated with the partial pressure of the that feed species in the feed and permeate side by using the henry's law as we have used in the a uh, gas separation process so phi equal to sp where p is the partial pressure pressure and s is the henry's coefficient so you can write jv equal to minus ds p dash minus p double dash 
because here the constant in this process generally we assume s as a constant uh, constant so the henry's coefficient will not change across the membrane in general so here jv will become minus ds p dash minus p double dash divided by h where h is the thickness of the membrane p dash is the partial pressure at the feed side p double dash is the partial pressure at the permeate side permeate side now the product of diffusivity and henry's coefficient will become the p permeability this capital p represent the permeability so jv equal to minus p multiply by p dash minus p double dash divided by h now suppose d is the function of uh, diffusivity is the function of concentration so generally in a an isotropic uh, swelling the diffusivity becomes the exponential depends uh, exponentially depends upon the concentration so d equal to d naught exponential uh, uh, yeah exponential of g phi where g is a parameter d naught is another parameter so d naught is the diffusivity when phi equal to zero now we can substitute this term in the in the original uh, fixed law so this is the original fixed law jv equal to minus d d phi by dx so we substitute the value of d diffusivity as a function of phi in this equation now we, we can integrate that equation here so after integration you will get jv equal to d naught d zero divided by gh in bracket exponential of g phi dash minus exponential of g phi double s this now where h is the thickness of membrane and thickness of membrane now you can substitute the value of phi as a function of partial pressure by using the henry's law in this equation so here you can write jv equal to d d0 divided by gh exponential of g s dash p dash minus exponential of g s double dash p double dash here we as we can we assume that that the uh, uh, henry's coefficient are different at the both side of membrane at at the feed side it is the s dash at the permeate side it is s double dash now this equation can be used to calculate the flux across the membrane in the perforation process where we assume the anisotropic swelling that means the concentration of the, the diffusivity of feed species in the membrane will change with the concentration of that species present in the in the feed feed mixture 